Hey guys, Leanna here. Tata's Tuesday, back from E3. And uh, I'm running the Horizon Zero Dawn trailer um, because one of the big things I noticed at this year's E3 was a sudden explosion in female playable characters. And, you know, at first blush, this is a good thing, especially when they're fighting robot dinosaurs. I mean, a horizon looks awesome, right? And we're getting into the gameplay here. Um, the thing that struck me is that this, this protagonist, I'm not sure what her name is, but she reminds me a lot of Nariko from Heavenly Sword in a very similar sort of concept. You know, Heavenly Sword kind of blended with Turok. Um, and, you know, it's interesting to me that it's still Sony, you know, it, it's the same company. Sony has always been better than most about including female playable characters going right back to the original Resident Evil that, you know, was a big deal on the Sony PlayStation, the original PlayStation back in the day. And so... Uh, my my um, one lone hesitation in cheering this increase in, in female playable characters has nothing to do with Sony because PlayStation as a company has had a track record of keeping, you know, female playable characters first and foremost included. Um, this is not new for Sony, but this isn't something exclusive to Sony anymore. Uh, Xbox is doing it, you know, the, the Gears of War 4 trailer that a lot of people apparently couldn't see because it was too dark on the broadcast. But, uh, you know, female gear right there. Her name is, what's her name, Karen? I think that's her name. But, you know, that's there. And not the first time there's been a, a female character in a Gears of War game in terms of being one of the Gears. You know, Gears of War Judgment has had that. But... You know, Assassin's Creed, one of the twins is a female character. Um, it's obviously a trend, right? And what we're going to have to wait and see and watch over the next few years is whether this is just a reaction to the outcry from last year over Assassin's Creed Unity and the lack of female multiplayer characters, or whether this is actually something that is going to hold and sort of be the beginning of a new normal. Um, one thing I also noticed was that, you know, they had the numerous, numerous trailers was like, female character in the shot, followed immediately by the African American character. You know, it was almost shameless in the, look, diversity. And I really, really hope that this is something that is, is a sincere artistic decision and not just pandering in, you know, in the face of a lot of outrage and, you know, essentially an industry crisis because that means it's a band-aid and that means we're going to have another thing where the characters aren't well developed and the games aren't necessarily going to sell and then this you know um false perception that games with female playable characters don't sell is is going to impact us again we've already been through that once it's not true um but you know this has been a persistent myth that we're still trying to shake off so hopefully, you know, it'll be different this time. But there was one element of the, you know, women included in games that has got the internet kind of, you know, knickers in a twist territory. And that is the remake of Final Fantasy VII. I've had a couple people contact me about this, specifically regarding Tifa Lockhart. And, uh, you know, there's a big debate over in the Final Fantasy VII Remake, because it's a remake and not a remaster, there's one camp saying use the Advent Children um, model of Tifa, which has, you know, smaller boobs, smaller hips. Legs still go on for miles. You know, nobody seems to be complaining about that. But um, there, there's some people saying it's time for change. There's other people going, no, keep it the way it is. It's Final Fantasy VII. You know, that's the way the character was. We should keep her the way she was. 
Um, and of course, the Final Fantasy VII gear. It's really kind of hard to find the original look of her. There she is right there. Um, yes, she's well endowed. Part of that is because she's got a belt over her boobs making them look bigger. But it's an interesting debate because at first I was like, it's, it's, an, it's an old game. It's Final Fantasy VII. You should maintain the, the creative decisions of the original game. That was my first instinct. And then I realized that would be true if it was a remaster. It's not. It's a ground up remake. And that, you know, if you think of a remake in in movies, you know, they remake the Fantastic Four and change the race of some of the characters. You know, they remake Superman and change the color of Lois Lane's hair. It's all up in the air with the remake, Loki. And hence we have our current debate. What do I think? Well, usually creators of, of games create a certain physicality for a reason. And I think it's important to examine the reasons for uh, Tifa Lockhart's physicality in Final Fantasy VII. Now, some of the things that the, the critics of her appearance here are saying are accurate, that, you know, her breasts look bigger than they normally would because of graphics limitations at the time that Final Fantasy VII came out. That's true. You'll also notice she has abnormally large eyes and an extremely tiny nose. So it's also the, you know, the anime aesthetic. And that has been slowly fading or gradually it's completely gone now. Well, no, 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 that's not true. There are still some, some anime influences in Final Fantasy, but the, you know, the typical manga eyes are, are not a part of the Final Fantasy franchise anymore. Um, except on some of the th DS games where they still have the, the cartoonier sort of anime style. Um, so what was the intent of making uh, Tifa Lockhart's character built like this. I will admit, I don't know because I'm not a diehard Final Fantasy VII fan. And I would caution the developers in stepping away. I mean, they already have stepped away, let's face it, because they redesigned her for Advent Children. They put her in sort of, you know, a similar outfit, an outfit that does the same thing and just changes the, the physical dimensions of the character. And I find that kind of strange. They're, they're sort of doing the same thing while denying inclusion of a particular body type while, while they're at it. So is this progress? I can't necessarily say it is. I mean, without her suspenders, her skirt would fall off. Uh, I think that's a skirt. It could be shorts. I'm not sure, but this, this is one of those things where remakes are tricky and remakes are tricky because how much do you update something for modern sensibilities and how much do you maintain the original artistic choices of the original work? And personally, I think they have to be very, very careful here not to go too far into bland the way they did to me for Advent Children. I, I didn't even recognize that character as Tifa. I only know that that thing in the top left corner is, is her because uh, somebody pointed it out online and I went, oh yeah, that's her outfit. Um, I think it's important to make sure characters are distinct as opposed to politically correct. And this is something, I think the discussion's good. I see, I see some of the purpose of the people saying, come on, let's make her look less ridiculous. But at the same time, I think that the fans who actually care about the original character for, you know, non-porny reasons should be hurt as well. So Loki's going crazy and I'm going to figure out what he's doing. Uh, catch you guys next week.